Well, people, it's official. Kamala Harris selects Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz. Yeah, he will be the man. And though this is shaded in black, I will soon play that video and we will try and find out about Mr. Waltz. Let me tell you a few things right off the bat. Uh, he's for universal uh, school meals. He promoted that and got that done. Uh, supports recreational marijuana, codifying abortion rights, uh, he's viewed as progressive on climate change and promoting infrastructure spending. But what if I told you that as I put this up against the five C's, that this dynamic duo of our time, Tim Waltz and Kamala Harris, all this was planned long, long, long time ago. Well, let's get on with it. It's the five C's of clues, codes, colors, confirmation time conclusion. I'm Friend Shad Piercy. Welcome new subscribers. Let's go down the road and see what's popping. Kamala Harris named Minnesota Governor Tim Walls as her running mate. Walls is a former school teacher and seasoned Washington lawmaker who has been credited with a new political insult against Republicans. Yes, they're weird. They prove that every day. It's an observation. Walls is viewed as more of a moderate figure, but someone who has picked up a number of progressive causes as governor. He's not somebody who has an extensive fundraising base or is someone who's very well known among the public. Walls' ascension comes as Harris has consolidated support among Democrats after President Biden exited the race. Here's a look at what Walls brings as running mate in an election showdown with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. Tim Walls is a proven winner among rural voters, and he's been very successful in Minnesota, which is a state that Republicans are trying to put onto the battleground map. Thank you, Minnesota. Walls really... So yeah, they love him. They love him in the role. People, I can actually admire how this thing is being crafted. Not only on the Democratic side, but the Republican side as well. I said in a video about a week ago, it's the checkerboard. The powers stay in the middle and they present to you both sides. One might be pro-marijuana, one might be the opposite of that. One might be pro-abortion, one might be opposite of that. One gives the illusion that they're for family, the other one's like, hey, you know what, we need to be a little bit more liberal and we need to get to find exactly what family is. And so you got a hundred cherries to pick. One gets 50, one gets 50, and they all got their different subjects and topics. And you're like, oh, wow, well, I like Trump for this. Oh, well, I like Harris for that. You can go to the polls based on the selection that you made from the cherries. But, best, but, 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 but guess what? The powers put that whole bowl together, <laughs> see? And then they get you to choose. Because you need an opponent as you go down a road where both are going maybe opposite directions on surface, but underneath, they're headed toward the same de destination. And America, arguably, is going into the one world system. And so as we look at Carmela, and we look at Mr. Waltz, you can't help but think is there somebody in the background? Because you know, in um, October 18th of 1989, the late Gerald Ford, the president, he predicted a female president would happen. And he said that the president would die. So is that Joe Biden that will, that will reach his demise? You follow me? And then boom, Harris and Tim Walsh getting the nod, if they win, if they win, 
And when I say win, if they win the hearts of the people, but people, we still got a few weeks, give or take, before the convention. If there's a deal brokered behind the back, I'm telling you, I can't tell many videos I watched the last three days, where well, there's still an iffy chance that she could be knocked out. And now he's the vice president of whom? Michelle Obama. Stay tuned, baby. It's about to get interesting. Check it out. How does all of this feel? I mean, three, four weeks ago, I cannot imagine you were thinking this was a possibility for you in the coming year. <laughs> yeah, high school geography teachers don't usually think that. Look, it, it, is, uh, it is humbling. It's a privilege. It's surreal. I think what I'm most excited about in this moment is, is it's clear we're going to win in November. It's clear that the darkness and this dystopian view that we keep getting pushed on us, uh, we, we see tonight. I Don't explain to me. I see, uh, you know, Vice President, soon to be President Harris, talking about health care affordability, lifting up jobs, those types of things. I see Donald Trump talking about the wonderful Hannibal Lecter, whatever weird thing he's on tonight. That needs to end. <laughs> and so for me, I think the joy, of, I, 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 the joy of it is, is to see something that feels so normal and so decent and, and to watch, and I keep saying this, I can almost physically see Donald Trump shrinking in front of us because of the ludicrous of it. And that is the gift that Joe Biden gave with this selfless. Now, you've heard some of his response. But what are the odds this purple, and it is purple, will be right behind him? What are the odds? You know, I teach the five C's, and one of those five C's is colors. The Phoenicians who used to rule. And what about his lapel? Is that Tiffany blue? The two major colors of the Phoenicians back in the day, these guys who are, uh, these seamen who sacrificed babies and sacrificed nations and whatever, their two main colors is purple and Tiffany blue. What are the odds he had purple behind him as he's talking? Look, baby, you got to ask the questions. And when I show you these numbers, you're going to realize why, why, why I've asked the questions. Last video. Check it out. Tim Walz means for this ticket now. Well, it means, number one, the Democrats have their ticket. They're about to go into their convention. And after Kamala Harris clinched the nomination with the most unorthodox nominating process of our lifetime, the president of the United States st steps aside after winning the primaries. She wins a virtual voting among the delegates. And then she wants to make this decision. She wants all this cleaned up before they get to Chicago for the convention. So that can all be about prosecuting the case against Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and against the Republicans. Uh, so a very truncated process, a lot of pressure on the vice president. So if, if the voters out there get to judge you know how she's handling this first first big executive decision so why Tim Walz we're showing pictures of him right there in a jacket and a, and a shirt with no tie on earlier we had pictures of him in a t-shirt I do think the contrast here is going to be striking this is a small town Midwesterner uh, this is a man who won a Republican House seat and held it in very difficult years for Democrats, he held on to it. Uh, so he has that small town rural appeal, which is why did Donald Trump pick J.D. Vance? Sort of the same idea. Can you go into small communities and make the case? He's the chairman of the Democratic Governors Association. I can tell you his fellow Democratic governors. They love him. Listen. Love him. Mm -hmm. Love him. They love him. So he can get a consensus. They love him. He might not have a financial backing, but it's okay. Carmela and the gang got money. Sorry, bad English. Has money. And hey, if uh, Michelle Obama come up like the horse race, guess what? They definitely going to have the money. Are you happy with this if you're a Democrat? Are you happy? Are you from Minnesota? Tell me what you think. Has, uh, has this gentleman done a good job? Mr. Tim Walks, what do you think? Check this out. The National Democratic Convention. I plan to go to that at least one day. It begins August 19th of 2024. August 19th. Now, check this out. Harris to share stage with running mate in Philly who would stand by her side. That's the question. Well, this was written before she made her choice. Okay, this was earlier today. But now we know she has a choice. Mr. T, let's call it Mr. T. Let's have a little fun. 
tongue in cheek, have a little fun. So, Vice President Kamala Harris will introduce her new running mate at a rally Tuesday evening in Philadelphia. But with the event mere hours away, her choice remains a mystery. Now, I will give you guys hopefully about an hour, maybe two hours, two hours in advance. I'll see how my evening is going to go. I plan on doing a live of this announcement tonight. Tonight, tonight, Tuesday night. I plan on doing a live show because they're going to be in Philly. <laughs> I got to call up Trump. Maybe he can loan me his jet so I can go out there and cover that story. So in recent days, she has zeroed in on a trio of potential finalists, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, and Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz. Okay? So Philly, here we come. Philadelphia was established May 12th of 1888. May 12th. Now check this out. Here is their logo. Right? The owl. It is the owl, people. The owl. I said the owl. Look at that. When I saw it, I know there's no connection. However, when I saw it, I thought about this place here, the Bohemian Grove. A place where former presidents have been Richard Milhouse Nixon and Ronald Reagan. They say the kingmakers who become president in the future, they go there to be anointed and appointed for the future. This place is where they say sacrifices go on and they burn up babies and animals at the stake. That's what they say allegedly. And there, look at the owl. Look at that. So again, I'm not saying they're related, but when I saw this here, I was like, wow, okay, Temple University, Temple, okay. So now, also remind me of this, Temple University police officer Chris Fitzgerald fairly shot in the head while trying to stop carjacking. That happened. Uh, not too long ago. Uh, I remember that. I did a video on that on my last show. In, in fact, my last site, French Eye Pearson. I'm going to hasten on. Uh, this happened, that shooting happened back in February 18th of 2023. Now let's look at this here. On April 6th, April 6th, that is the birthday of that college, Temple University, 4-6-2024. If you subtracted it from 512, let's see here. I'm sorry, my bad. 512, let's go back. 512-1888. So May 12th, May 12th. May 12th is the anniversary. They just they just had a birthday. Uh what? May 12, 2024, a year plus ago, subtracted from 4-6. What is 4-6? That's the birthday of the governor, the guy who's going to be the VP nominee. The difference is 47 weeks. Isn't that something? And Carmela's trying to be the 47th president. Interesting, huh? Now look at this. They're going to Philadelphia. Going to make the announcement tonight in Philadelphia. All right? Philadelphia comes out in reverse, 223. Philadelphia and Gematria. Now watch this. 819 is what? Let's look, see 819. 819 is. 819. That's. Date, 819. 819 is the day of the Democratic National Convention. So many icons. 819, day of the 
Democratic Knowledge Convention. So if you take 819 of 2024, subtract it from election day of 11 5 2024, you get 223. Two months, two weeks, three days. Just like Philadelphia is 223. Wow. Is that coincidence? Let's go for, forward. Uh, next we have Tim Waltz. His birthday is April 6, 1964. And then you have Tim Waltz became the governor January 7, 2019. January 7. You take January 7, 2019, the day he became governor, Subtracted from his birthday, April 6th of 2024, just passed. Look at that. Come on, man. 63 months between the time he was elected as governor, January 7th, 2019, versus his birthday, April 6th, 2024. Can you believe that? 63, 366, 666. That's a mathematical improbability. Did I, did I not suggest that this thing was uh, all planned? Allegedly. Let's go deeper. Tim Waltz was criticized in relation to this event. See, he waited too late to deploy the Minnesota National Guard. Remember, they had the situation there in Minnesota. And he was heavily criticized. That is, the governor. Tim Waltz was heavily criticized for taking too long to bring them in. Remember they burnt, almost burnt down, uh, I don't know, he just burnt down the city. I, I'm not even gonna put it in there because I don't wanna get in trouble here, but they had the riots, they had everything going on during this period. You remember that, okay? He was heavily criticized all over the news. Now, he died May 25th of 2020. May 25th, 2020. If you take May 25th and bring it to 2024, the anniversary, subtract it from 8-6, which is today, announcement was made that Mr. Walsh will be vice president nominee of 2024. The difference is two months, one week, and six days. What is 216? The 216th day of the year is August 4th. Who was born August 4th? Barack Obama. When you include the end date. Is that a mathematical improbability? Is that, is that coincidence? Is the thing fixed? Kamala Harris' birthday, October 20th, 1964. Her birthday, October 20th, 2024, coming up. Versus this day, 4-6 is what? Mr. Walt's birthday. His birthday just passed. The difference is six months and two weeks. Now, today is Tuesday. Barack Obama became 63 years old on Sunday. Now, Carmela Harris was still vetting. She was still vetting um, VP candidates. So I, I would say it would be fair to say that when Barack Obama was still 62 years old, Carmella was still making a decision. So let's go through this again. Barack Obama, 62 years old, a few days ago. Carmella's birthday is October 20th. Tim Walt's birthday is 4 6. Subtract the difference is six months and two days, 62. Now Barack Obama turns 63 on August 4th. Now check this out. Here we have. I'm going to get in trouble for that. I want to show you guys something here. Uh, when it comes up, I'll just show it to you. I want to show you a license plate. Matter of fact, it's George Floyd's license plate. When he was being arrested, I've shown this before. He had a Mercedes 320. That's what George Floyd was driving. 
a Mercedes SUV 320. And remember, he died under a police car number 320. But look at the license plate that George Floyd was, he had on his car. BRJ26. I've said in other videos, when you go backwards, is a possibility this was Joseph Robinette Biden. JRB, Joseph Robinette Biden. What are the odds that JRB would be on his license plate? I'm going to leave it at that. See what else do I have? Okay, Park. Why is that important? Well, George Floyd died on 36th and Park. The dispatch was told, fire engine needs to go to Park and 36. That's 36 is 666. Park and Gematria comes out to 46, which means destruction. Okay, it also means like death. Also, Joe Biden is now the 46th president. And 19, during that whole period of Floyd and the other period of 19, okay, that's chaos. Look it up. Look at the C-19. It says it gives you chaotic behavior. And then boom, 62, reminds you of today, just throwing it out there, Barack Obama. That might be it. Let me see what else I have. Okay. Um, Minnesota. He is the governor of Minnesota. It was created May 11th of 1858. May 11th. You take May 11th of 2023, just had a birthday a year plus ago, versus 4-6, the, the birthday of the governor, 4-6. The difference is 47 weeks ago. Carmela's trying to be the 47th president. I really think this thing was planned long time ago, long time ago, long time ago. Matter of fact, since I'm on, on something presidential, I ran a video earlier in relation to RFK Jr. saying that um, he took a bear, put it in the back of his trunk, and uh, then he took the bear and put it in the park. And um, 